the final round at the World Blitz Championships 2022. Uzbek prodigy Nadir Bek Abdul Satarov is waiting for the world champion. There he is. Magnus Carlsen is here. It's going to be a critical game. If Magnus wins, he's the champion. If he draws and if Hikaru wins, then they tie. A lot of pressure on Magnus' shoulders. Meanwhile, Nodirbek has beaten him in the past and is always looking forward to the opportunity to play the big guy. Let's see how Magnus deals with this pressure. He's playing with the white pieces with 3 minutes plus 2 seconds increment, opens the game with 1e4. Nodirbek responds with e5. Knight f3, knight c6. Is it going to be the Italian? No, it's the Rui Lopez. a6, bishop a4 and knight to f6. Magnus now plays the super solid 5d3 line and b5 played by Norderbeck. Bishop moves back. Bishop is developed. Both sides getting ready to castle but first a4 is played. Now you are threatening to take because the rook on a8 is undefended. So Norderbeck has to decide which way is he going to deal with it. He pushes the pawn and Ma Magnus castles here. So does Norderbeck. And now the knight jumps to d2. Typical development, d6 played by Abdul Satarov and now Magnus breaks with c3. Another move could have been a5, sort of fixing the two pawns there but Magnus decides to play c3. This is not played so much and Nodirbek has to decide because if he takes here then Magnus would take back gaining a stronger hold in the center. So rook b8 is played and Magnus just sort of adjusts his pawn. Rook to e1 played. Now the knight is getting ready to go to f1. Nodirbek plays his knight to a5. Of course you're not going to give up that bishop. Bishop goes back and pawn comes up to c5. White hits the center with d4. This tension is a lot in the center. So Nodirbek frees up a bit of the tension. Takes on c3 first, now takes on d4, Magnus recaptures. Now we have two open files here. It must be mentioned that black's development looks slightly more smooth. You know, you can get this bishop out, you can move your queen here, you can move the other rook. But what white has are these two strong pawns and you can push the pawn further to gain even more space. So Norderbeck plays knight to c6 and he's telling Magnus to resolve the tension here in the center. Magnus says, I'm pushing my pawn forward, gaining even more space. But Nodirbek has the b4 square for his knight. Magnus, of course, doesn't give up the bishop. Now, a good move here is a5 and black is completely fine. But Nodirbek makes knight h5 a positional error. Because now, white can push forward with a5, fix the weakness on a6 and get a lot of space. And Magnus, of course, plays it. Nodirbek seems to have underestimated this. All of a sudden, Magnus has a great position. The knight jumps to f4. It's looking at the d3 square, both these knights. But is that so dangerous? Can you simply just move your knight away? Or move your rook to e3 to defend the d3 square? The main advantage that white has now is that he has space and Magnus knows it. He knows that he's strategically doing quite well here. But he must be careful because black is active. Both the knights are beautifully perched here. The bishop is ready to enter the game. And that's the reason why Magnus is taking his time. This is the correct moment to sort of feel all the dynamics of the position. To understand what do you want to do. When do you want to push g3 this knight away. When do you want to play knight f1. Take this knight or put your bishop on a3. The rook can also swing over from a3. Lot of possibilities here. And now the time is almost equal. In fact, Magnus has gone below Nodirbek's time. And Magnus is somehow, you know, managing to keep his cool because so much is at stake at this point. Meanwhile, Nodirbek has very little to lose. If he beats the world champion here, that would be something to boast about. Knight goes back to f1. Not the best move. Rookie 3 would have been much better to defend the d3 square. Because now Nodirbek can play queen c7, put pressure on the bishop. But he first goes bishop to g4. What's the point of this move? Well, the idea is that you want to take here, queen takes, and then move the knight and fork these two rooks. So, Nodirbek has played his bishop to g4, but Magnus can simply go knight e3, 
he can hit the bishop here he can also protect the c2 square but look at the time magnus down to one minute 10 seconds he is now quite low on time he must move quickly he plays his knight to e3 Norderbeck keeps the pin going excellent move bishop to h5 rook a3 and now this rook trying to defend on that side queen c7 the queen attacks the bishop here and magnus must play bishop f1 but he goes bishop d2 this is a mistake the best move now for Norderbeck is to play f5 notice the knight on e3 is overworked it cannot take here because if you take rook f5 can come in ef5 and queen takes c4 if you take with the pawn i can push e4 and then it's all tremendously messy in this way so he must go f5 but instead he takes on f3 oh my god this is not a good move at all because now magnus can simply take with his queen and he is clearly better but with 46 seconds left can he handle all the tactics here queen takes f3 knight c2 magnus takes it queen takes c4 but that's no problem you can move your knight back that's what he does exactly knight e3 and now notice that this knight on f4 can be kicked away queen d4 rook d1 defending the bishop here you must stop the knight from coming to f5 so g6 should be played look at magnus's focus there 45 seconds Norderbeck has one minute eight seconds and he goes queen c5 not the best move here knight jumps to f5 the queen is defending the rook the knight is attacking the bishop white is completely better now also bishop takes f4 not to forget you can win that knight there i mean a pawn there bishop g5 he tries to defend it but you know just push the bishop away with h4 yes he does that great move by magnus now all of a sudden you can't defend this you can't go bishop h6 because the knight controls it what should Nodirbek do now he's almost at the same time as magnus carlson magnus's last few moves have been tremendous bishop f6 and now you can bring your rook here to c3 hit the queen the b6 the d6 pawn is tremendously weak but when you play rook c3 notice that the a5 pawn becomes something that black can take and he plays it is there a good discovered attack after queen takes a5 Norderbeck is taking his time here he needs to figure out what to do because if he does not take this pawn he is losing the d6 pawn so he takes it but magnus first goes g3 nice little move you must move the knight but where the knight where does the knight go i think the g6 is the only move but after you go to g6 i can take on d6 instead he sacrifices a piece knight takes d5 and his idea is that if you take back he takes d5 no but he doesn't take he goes rook a3 wow what a move by magnus carlson he hits the queen with the bishop and the rook whoa what a move and the point is next move he would like to take it so that e4 does not hit his rook here queen c5 played and again accuracy to the maximum rook c1 hitting the queen so that after e takes d5 e4 the queen does not attack the rook here queen b6 and now he takes it excellent play white is completely winning magnus is just a few moves away from becoming the champion but Norderbeck is not going to give up he's still going to set some tricks rook d3 defending the bishop all that magnus has to do is keep everything controlled king g2 what a nice move queen to b5 Norderbeck only had a second rook c6 now the d6 pawn is hanging he plays rook e8 pawn falls another pawn falls magnus is now many pawns up and there you have it magnus is the new world blitz champion that's how you celebrate on a chessboard because you can't really shout the other games are going on but look at the happiness on magnus's face he's now the triple world champion in classical chess rapid chess and also in blitz chess a handshake with the arbiter and magnus carlson is very very happy I'm done for the last round as well. Beautiful I'm, game by no, against Norderbeck. Yeah, I was really happy with. So accurate. Really, really happy with that. I, I mean, at some point, like he could have gone on f5 instead of taking an f3. And I was thinking during the game, like, man, just make a draw. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as he took on f3 and he played knight c2, I'm thinking, okay, I'm strategically winning now. So as I have like 45 seconds. Take a deep breath. Um, and frankly, like for the last two games. I was super, super calm. Uh, I had 
I had some coffee. I don't usually drink coffee, but I, I felt like I needed a shot of something. Uh, so I had some coffee before the game against Solana. But like for that game, I was too agitated. I was playing too excitedly, and I was just, <laughs> I was just crushed. But for the last two games, I had like the right amount of energy. So uh, also the the last game, like where I managed to go like rook, uh, rook first rook a three, rook, rook c one, just on. very accurately. Um, not giving him any chances whatsoever. I was at that point. I was just laser focused, and I had, um, um, yeah. At that point, I was just concentrated and not, not nervous whatsoever. So that was that was a great feeling. Um, that's something I'm very proud of in this tournament. That I, that I uh, both last round games, like I didn't secure the wins by by draws. I actually played two very good games. So that was that was very good. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.